there's times in my life now that, you know, I, I talk about this, but it's, you feel really betrayed. I know what that feels like on a deep level when you're just so alone and you feel betrayed by a lot of people that should be there for you, but they're not. And you just, you can't give up. You can't get disheart, dis any feel of disheartment. You know, you just have to really suffer through it and say, it's okay. You know, and, uh, you're giving yourself a win in that moment that you can call on later on in life to serve you. Yeah. The, I think the old cliche is uh, quitters never win winners never quit. And that's a, a simple way of saying what we're talking about here is that passion will lead to success. If, for, if you've got an idea as an entrepreneur and you try it and it doesn't work and you give up and go back to the employee world. Okay. Well, you're, you're never going to be successful in the way that you intended because you quit. You got to endure. You got to push through. And yes, you're right. That passion word is a lot about suffering too, suffering and endurance. In today's ultra competitive business world, being a successful entrepreneur or business owner can be very challenging. Fortunately, contemporary times have blessed us with resources for tackling those challenges and getting us to success more quickly than we could have imagined. Welcome to the Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan, a podcast that explores how the world's most powerful entrepreneurs grow incredible companies. This podcast looks at the five keys to unlocking success as an entrepreneur. A successful educator turned entrepreneur, Jason's mission is to use his gifts of teaching and leadership to help others get the results they want out of life. Join Jason every week and learn the keys to grow a truly successful business. Welcome back to another episode of The Root of All Success. I am the real Jason Duncan. I'm coming to you live from my, well, you're not listening live, but I'm, <laughs> I'm recording this in my home studio here in Gallatin, Tennessee, just north of Nashville. And if you ever come to Nashville, look me up. Uh, you can find me out on LinkedIn at The Real Jason Duncan or Instagram at The Real Jason Duncan. I'd love to connect with you. Thank you for listening. I don't know how you stumbled upon this show. If you know me, know somebody or know my guests, however it happened, I'm just glad you're here. I love doing this show. It's a lot of fun. I actually, today's the third recording of the day for me. So I'm a little tired. It's, a, it's been a long day, but today's guest really helped me push through because she has a great story. And I'm going to introduce her in just a minute. But before I do, I want to again say to thank you for, for listening and subscribing. And if you haven't left a review, please go do that. You have no idea how much that helps podcasters like me. It gets us higher in the rankings so that other people can listen. It helps us get better sponsorships and it makes the show better. So thank you for being able to leave me a uh, five-star review. I'd appreciate that very, very much if you haven't done. Now, if you're not watching this, you can see me right here at my home studio in Gallatin, Tennessee. If you go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash the real Jason Duncan, and you can watch me and you can watch the guests today and you can watch all our guests. So let me introduce today's guest, Sabrina Lloyd. Uh, Sabrina is going to tell a story today about how she immigrated from Canada into the United States with the anticipation of going into the medical field, but a chance meeting changed her life trajectory forever. And uh, she took that chance meeting and got involved in the insurance business and ended up killing it went to three different cities around the country and built multi-million dollar agencies and now is running her own agency with Lloyd Agency, Sabrina Lloyd, of course. And uh, she is now an entrepreneur. She's an executive coach. She's a self-made millionaire and she empowers, loves empowering women uh, and equips them with the right tools and knowledge so that they can become leaders that they were meant to be. And you'll hear on the show, she talks a lot about leadership and how key that is. And as a leader herself, she's built her agency to be uh, notified, uh, to be recognized in the Chicago Tribune for, I guess, what is that, seven years? It's from 14 to 22, or 22 is not out yet, but 14 to 21, she's been recognized as one of the best, best places to work in Chicago. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. So that speaks to her ability to lead and develop and make good culture. So her agency, Lloyd Agencies, is a premier agency as a member of the American Income Life family. And she focuses on a very broad client base and they market themselves a little bit differently, but they're, they're more lifestyle oriented, both in how they approach business and how they've developed their company culture. In the last four years, Lloyd Agency has surpassed agencies that have been around for decades. And she's 
pretty new at her own agency. And over that period of time, they've grown over 80% in revenue and have been doubling in size every single year. And product projections indicate that they're going to have over a thousand representatives in her agency by the end of the year. That's pretty amazing. And when she's not working, she enjoys traveling, reading, and her car collection, which you're going to hear me asking about her cars today because I'm a car guy and I want to hear what she's got. So please join me in welcoming today's guest, Sabrina Lloyd. Hey, Sabrina, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad to do it. You had you were so gracious to have me on your show last year, and we've been trying to get you booked for my show, and we finally did it, and we're here. You're in uh, cold and windy Chicago, and I'm in cold and snowy Nashville today. It's It's been cold here uh, recently, and of course, it's wintertime. It's what it's supposed to be, but thank you for doing this. I got, I've got a question to ask you. So when this show is about successful entrepreneurs, so when you think about how you got your start as an entrepreneur. Some people say they had, as a kid, they shoveled snow, they mowed yards, they sold cookies, whatever they did. And then it translated later into entrepreneurship. And then other people say, well, I didn't get an entrepreneurship at, until I was an adult. So when, when was your beginning as an entrepreneur? You know, I think this sounds uh, very strange, but I was trained to be a servant. And I think this is what entrepreneurship is, Right. Uh, trained to learn how to serve others, trained to learn how to just really think about the customer instead of thinking about ourselves. And I think it's a misnomer for a lot of people that are getting into entrepreneurship today that you think, well, I'm going to do this because I want to be my own boss and I want to make my own my, my own money and I want to be in control. But you know, as a little girl, I was raised by a very tough father and he was a worker. So I was raised seeing a man work three shifts and he wanted more. So he had to work more. But what that did was it planted a seed inside of me. And then what we had to do is when my father was working, we had to work, we had to produce, we had to mow the lawn. We had to, and I'm a girl, right? So we didn't have brothers. So we had to wash the cars. We had to mow the lawns. We had to do the dishes. We had to do all these things. And it was unacceptable to my father for us to be resting and not contributing. And so when I look back in my journey, I would have never made it in entrepreneurship if I didn't have this incredible work ethic and the ability to serve. And that was like really deeply planted inside of me from my parents and both of my mom and my dad, just really hustling in the sense of outworking everyone. And I, and I'm very grateful for that. And I always encourage people to know that being an entrepreneur is a gift. It's a blessing, but it cannot be just about you because the moment it gets hard and you don't have that serving mentality, you will escape because it's really about your feelings and your emotions. And, you know, this is so huge for people to get. If you can develop this ahead of time, if you have an idea, you've got to back up your idea with work ethic to be able to execute on your idea because so many people have ideas, but you're just not going to make it through those like slumps and those dips if you don't have that work ethic to persist and push out of them. So you, you had originally wanted to go into uh, the medical field, which is not technically entrepreneurial, although uh, there are medical professionals who are also entrepreneurs, but most are not. So what was it was, I would imagine that that hard work, that ethic that you had and the servant's heart that you just indicated in your answer, was that why you wanted to go into the medical field or was there another, another reason? I love the idea of being able to like educate people so that they do better. And so, you know, when I think about being a doctor, I think that's like the pinnacle in the health field where you are really able to you know, know so much, but then to share it with your patients and then like add value to their life so that they can make better decisions and they can really just have a better life. And so what I loved about, you know, the pursuit of being a doctor is just learning about science. And, you know, that was, it still is my passion today, even though I'm in business, I approach it very scientifically, but I also make sure that I understand that business is also an art. It's not just data and doing things a certain way. And so it's that balance. And if you think about like my parents were both from the healthcare field, so that was like naturally impressed upon me, but I think I wanted to be what was like the best in the healthcare field. And that was a doctor, you know, they always had the most influence. And it's funny because 
you know, giving birth, I quickly saw like how a doctor is versus a nurse and the staffing, you know, the nurse does all the hard work, right? Does all (laughs) of the labor they're with you for 90% of the time. And then the doctor comes in for like 10% does the work and like goes, and it's not the time it's their specialty. It's what they've train for so that they can go in there in 10% of the time and get the job done. And I love that, you know, to me, that's an executor. That's someone who can, who's called in at the last minute when you really need them and they can go in there and they can make it happen. And I believe that's, you have to have that as an entrepreneur, you have to be that person who wants to be called in those moments that can perform. And I think when people are learning entrepreneurship, that's the skill. That's what you're trying to like really carve out in your personality. So never get discouraged when you're going through hard times because they're coming, yeah. they're coming for you, but it, it's just like a doctor training those sleepless nights. Why do you have to train 48 hours with no rest and take an exam? Because when an emergency is happening, you have to be able to perform. It's someone's life on the line. And, you know, if you look at your business, it's the same way. If in those like emergency moments, you retreat, you retract, you drop the ball, it'll cost you everything, everything you work so very hard for. You, you are going to go into the medical field, but as I talked about in the intro, you had a chance meeting with, with somebody that changed everything. Talk me through that. I want like, don't leave out any details. I want to hear the story. What happened? How did that, how did that happen? You know, I always say that it is, it's so important, the associations we make in our life. And this is why whatever you're doing, if you are a hairdresser, if you are even a cleaner, if you are running your own business, whatever, if you're a teacher, have an entrepreneurial spirit about you so that you are really great and you're paid very well for it. And let me explain why, because when I, I had to move to the States and this was like life's, you know, shifts that it, it it creates for you. So I I left Canada where I grew up my whole entire life. I came to the U S and I, I obviously wanted to find a job and we always move to what's familiar first. Right. So I interviewed for some hospital jobs. And then I used to work in a bank as I was paying my way through university. So I, I, you know, seeked out some bank jobs and the money that they were offering. I was like, wait, I have to buy furniture. I have to like, I, I have to like start my life by the, if I go at this rate that what they're willing to pay me, I'll have a bed in like five years. You know, there's no way I can get ahead this way. So I had an association with sales. So by chance, I just took a chance and put my resume out in a sales category. And I knew I had a cousin who was in sales and she did tremendous. Like she did very well, always had a lot of money. She was married to someone who was in sales too. They had lots of money. So I associated sales with money Then I had an uncle who was an entrepreneur and he was the wealthiest person in our family. So I already had these like inklings to associate it with good. And so when I got the call to, to do uh, these interviews for a sales position and they, they went and showed how much money I can make. And whenever you're interviewing for a sales position, they always like talk about it, like best case scenario. And nobody knows that at the time. (laughs) <laughs> salesmen or salespeople they're yeah, selling for you sure. so you know I, I i interviewed for hospital jobs and bank jobs and they were saying like at that time it was like 11 dollars an hour or 12 dollars an hour which was high to them and i was like what are you even saying right now and then when i went to these sales interviews they were saying you know 75,000, 100,000, 200,000, you know, people in here are making 300, 400,000. And I was just like, wait, what is happening here? As long as this is legal and ethical, sign me up, you know? Right. And so <laughs> that is, it was really interesting because the whole interview process was so strange. And, you know, what I try to bring to sales that I think a lot of people uh, don't is I try to let you know, people that have never been in sales know that I was never in sales. I am not, I'm not supposed to be in sales. I had to like relearn and recreate myself to flourish here. 
But if I didn't have those positive associations with sales, then I would be starting with a handicap. And this is why talking to negative people or people that are not doing so well is dangerous because they can taint your view on something that has nothing to do with that thing. It's them, not the opportunity. Right. Yeah. And so thank goodness I had a good impression about sales and entrepreneurship ahead of time. So I wasn't afraid to do the work, even if I wasn't bawling, you know, my first year, I knew I would get there. I had that faith and that belief that so many people start things, uh, you know, Jason, they start with doubt. They start with skepticism. They start like looking sideways at something. And that's really why they never make it. And it's really, if you tell them that they can't even receive the message because they're such a skeptic. They're such a doubter of their own success. So you put your resume out there uh, and, and did, did American Income Life reach out to you and say, hey, we want you to come in for an interview. Is that how that worked? Yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, when they called me, I, you know, I'm, I'm such an over preparer, right? So I didn't know, I didn't know anything about recruiting. Now I know like so much about how recruiting works and, and how, like what's going on behind the scenes. But at that time I was, you know, just so concerned about, okay, why did they get my resume? What company is this? You know, I have to look up this company. I have to over prepare for the interview. Can I just say, thank goodness. This was 2005. The internet in 2005 is not the internet of 2022, right? (laughs) No, it is not. So thank goodness there wasn't like everyone and their mother complaining about the opportunity because when you go and read things, it's not the people that are doing well that post, you know, this is how great this opportunity is. It's always Mm -hmm. the complainers. And so thank goodness I didn't have to like fight over that because with our company, like we do very, very well. And I don't, I don't know where that would have taken me also. So I think, you know, just them calling me, I was really inquisitive, like, okay, how do I prepare for the interview? Why me? Why are you calling me? What on my interview did you see that made me be a potential match? And the truth is about entrepreneurship and and sales is that the match is your attitude. If you have the, the right attitude, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. You, you can come from such a strange background, but if you have the right attitude and the right thinking and the, and a great work ethic, you will excel. There's no doubt about it. So what, what year, what year did that happen when you put your resume out there and they called you in? That was 2005. Oh, five. So you got Oh five. So you, so we're talking 17, about 17 years ago, you had just immigrated into the United States from Canada uh, you, you, you wanted to be in the medical field, maybe, maybe go back to the bank, but you're like, uh, that's not going to make enough money. You'd heard sales is going to work it, put your resume out there. American income life calls you and you're over-prepared. And what you now know is that they, you know, as long as you were slightly qualified insurance company would probably give you a shot and they did give you a shot and you turned that shot into what most people don't, because isn't it, I, I don't know what the percent is. I used to be in the insurance business too, back in my twenties. Um, but isn't it like 90 something percent of people who come in as an agent, like flame out in the first year or so. So you didn't only beat the odds, but you beat the odds with lots of zeros on the end because you've been extremely successful and built your own agency in three, what, two or three different cities. You've killed it. Yeah. And you know, what's so funny, like, this is why I really just stress this to everyone. Just have a good work ethic and have a good attitude. If you want to know something funny, as much as you try to prepare, and I believe that there's big power in preparation, right? But when I did the interview, I saw this huge American flag in the office and Jason, all I was doing was praying. I was like, please do not ask me to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know it. I don't know it. I was like so nervous. That's so and, you funny. Know, we, this is like our mind takes us on these like uh, trips where we shouldn't be on sometimes. And that's why I just stay calm and, you know, trust the process. But what helped me was I'm, I am a process driven person And when someone that makes me very coachable, and I think what happens to a lot of people is that, you know, if you're trying to do everything your way, sometimes you have to be so coachable in the beginning and put your, your ways aside and just open yourself up to learn from leadership, to be mentored. And, uh, that, that really helped me out a lot. My first year, 
I'm, I'm not like, I was so scared. Everything was new. You know, the, the whole art of doing a presentation to a stranger is a very nerve wracking thing back in that time, Jason, we had to cold door knock. So if you want to do anything scary in your life, take on that, you know, just approaching random, strange people, cold door knocking them and on having their front porch. <laughs> yes. When people are like, you know, it is, but it puts something inside of you, something that a lot of people in sales today, you know, this is, this is just the truth. People in sales today are weak. You know, they're not hunters. Mm. They're not, they don't know how to like go and create something from nothing. And this is why a lot of them become a victim of the sales industry and, and entrepreneurship, because you're waiting for someone to give you something so that you can produce something. And that's not the essence of sales or entrepreneurship. The essence of being in sales and entrepreneurship is you have to be a creator. You have to be able to be resourceful enough to create things on your own. And then when you do this, it gives you confidence. Then you push it to the next limit. Then you push it to the next limit. You know, all those territories that I move through, like every single territory, I would build a multi-million dollar team. And then the whole thing of leaving that team to then go do it again, man, it makes you, it just, you're like, oh, I got to do this again. But, but that's where the good stuff it's, that's how confidence comes. And when you can't do that, and you know, this is why a lot of people are lacking confidence today. Why do you, or, or what, what insurance policies or types of insurance policies does American income life? Is it, is it life and health or is it, what, what, what are you selling or what, what, where are they, were you selling originally? Yes. Yeah, so life and health, we, do, we really specialize in uh, the life benefits. We do whole life term accidental. And we, our biggest thing on our team is uh, to really enforce that we don't compete with other agencies or other companies. Whenever we meet a customer who has a policy, we celebrate them. We celebrate that policy. We never, ever have this replacement mentality. We're always about adding to the coverage and filling any gaps that you have. And we have the products that can fill all your gaps. And if we don't have that product, then we feel no ways of referring you out to a company that we know that can fill that gap for you so that we're providing that, you know, really just honest, uh, deep level of service to our customers. So I want to I want to ask a uh, a personal question before we get into kind of the next phase of the interview. I want to ask you some questions about your success. But you, I mentioned in the uh, in the intro that you have a car collection, and I'm a car person myself. So uh, for those out there that are listening that also like cars, what uh, what do you got? Tell us tell us a little bit about your car collection. I mean, it's pretty extensive. Um, you know, my husband is really into cars, and so uh, we we together, it's not just having cars for the sake of cars, but then we started collecting cars. So GT threes, uh, we have, Ooh, nice. I think we're at like six GT three RSs. We have four Ferraris. We have, uh, a, a Lamborghini. Um, it started with one, you know, I, th I don't, this is crazy. And, and when I say it out loud, it sounds obnoxious because I don't even know how many cars we have because we have so many. <laughs> so, uh, but I'll tell you this, like the cars that we do have increase in value. So they're not like vain cars that you, you know, you're, you're driving around and they're depreciating. Our cars will go up in value. And if we, if we transfer them to our children, then they will be sitting on some very rare, uh, cars that will pay them very well. So yeah. it's, it's nice. Well, that's, that's super nice. I, I, uh, maybe if I ever get to Chicago, I want to come and see your, I want to come and see your collection. I love, I'm a, I love Porsches. So I would love to see your, your six <laughs> GT3 RSs. That's crazy. Yeah, he has, uh, it's, it's one of one in the world. It's, uh, they did a conversion on it. it they were making it, they stopped making the manual and he loves driving manual. I love driving me, manual too, too. So he converted it to a manual and actually Porsche in Germany found out about it. And it was like, it kind of created a, a kerfuffle, which was really cool. Cause when you're doing things that, you know, you're making waves and that's really cool that they found out about it. It was printed in magazines, like a one of one Porsche in the world, um, a manual conversion, which was really cool. 
I've got a t-shirt that says real cars don't shift themselves and it's the six speed shifter knob. <laughs> so yeah, I've, my yeah. car is a manual. I love, I love driving. I love the, I love rowing your own gears and it's, it's something amazing. Although the new PDK and uh, the Porsches are, is, is amazing. I mean, they shift the automatic is it's faster than you could shift it yourself, but it's certainly not as fun. <laughs> yeah. And I think this is like something that people have to, you know, experience for themselves because it's about like your ability to control and maneuver the car that feels different. Like you feel like you're a better driver, uh, when you can drive manual instead of just, you know, you're not a driver. If the car is driving for you, you're not <laughs> like, you're a passenger, you're a spectator, you're a watcher, you're an observer. You're not a driver. You're I not. Taught, I taught both of my kids how to drive a manual that was their first cars were both, uh, were both manual transmissions. I taught my wife when we were, I think we were in our first year of marriage. I taught her how to drive one. I know how to drive one. And I, and, and anytime I ever valet my car, I don't ever have a problem because normally valets are as part of the prerequisite. You got to know how to drive a manual. Well, I pulled up, we had a, there was a men's clothing store that opened up in the Gulch in Nashville a few weeks ago. And I went to, went to the grand opening and the, the hotel next door was providing the valet parking for the event. So I pull up and I get out and the guy looks inside. He goes, uh, hang on a minute. I, I can't oh, drive no. a manual. And he, he yells to his friend. He says, Hey, and whatever his name is, Rob, can you drive a manual? And the guy shook his head and he looked at me, he goes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> he said, he said, I'll tell you where to park, but you're going to have to park it yourself and you just don't have to pay. <laughs> Isn't that something? We're going to take a break from our show right now to bring you our sponsors. All right. Thanks for listening to our sponsors. Now back to the show. Oh my gosh. Well, okay. Well, let's get back to entrepreneurship. I, we could talk cars all day long, but this is not, uh, this is not about cars, but I, 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 I had to talk about that because I love cars so much. So here's Sabrina, here's the kind of my, the, the, the reason I started this show is I, I have a theory based on dozens and dozens of interviews before I even started the show with entrepreneurs like you who are very successful you know, they've, they've conquered every goal that they've had. They continue to set higher ones. They've made lots of money. They make a great impact on the world. They're helping lots of people. They employ lots of people. And I say, how do you do it? How did you do it? What do you think the keys were? And what I found is that these same five things kept showing up in every single story. So I started this show to explore that on the show with people like you. So what I'd like to do is spend the, the second half of our show kind of talking through the, my theory, and you just tell me if it's full of crap or if it's real, or if it happened to you or whatever. So, so here's the, the first key to success that I found is that of passion. And uh, it's not just excitement and joy for what you do. Like you're passionate about cars. I'm passionate about what we like, but that's, I'm not in the car business. I probably wouldn't make any money in the car business because I'm too, I, I like it too much. And I wouldn't, I would make bad decisions, but what the word passion actually means. If you go back and look at the root word, it means willing to endure. Mm -hmm. And, and so for those of us who follow Jesus, we know that the last week of his life, we call, refer to the passion week or the passion of the Christ. And I always wondered why, why do we call it that? That doesn't seem very passionate. And in fact, it means willing to endure, which is what he was doing, willing to endure for a cause. So in your story, is there, is there a place or a time or, or a situation where you can point to and said, yeah, here I'm successful today because of passion. And here's my endurance story. Here's where I pushed through when everybody else would have quit. Yeah. And I love that you use the word endure because it's so much nicer than, you know, I, I actually studied world religions alongside of, uh, science and, you know, the passion of Christ is actually the suffering of Christ. So like yeah. endurance sounds better, but it's like the suffering, like yeah. what are you willing to suffer through, you know, cause if you just endure it, it doesn't change you. But if you suffer through it, you're forced to change. You're forced to reinvent yourself. You're forced to get the lesson. Right. And then, so you don't repeat it. And that's the essence of, of life and, and entrepreneurship, you know, it just mirrors how life should transcend so that you rise up instead of like, keep falling down. So you get to the end of your life, being able to look back and say like, job well done, <laughs> you know? So listen, I, I don't, I, I haven't gone through a year where I haven't suffered. So when people are like, <laughs> You know, I suffered in 2005 and it's been like smooth sailing. I don't know what that means. I can't relate to that. You know, my whole career has been a lot of suffering, but this is why I've been able to be, uh, you know, so proud of the journey 
Um, one of the biggest times that I can say was it was 2009, 2010. This is when I was in New York and it felt like my world was, you know, just crushing on me. And, uh, it was, it was a really, really hard thing. And I think a lot of people feel this, you know, from, from COVID from 2020, like these major shifts that a lot of people are making. And I, all that I know is that if you just keep going, if you can just persist through, you know, you say that word endure, it's so powerful because it's the hardest thing to do. The easiest thing to do is to stop and quit. And that's why so many people never really like tap into what they're really capable of doing. And when I say this, like when you can tap into just how resourceful you are, when you're going through like the darkest periods of your life and you, you pull out of it, you know, this is when you become inspiring to many, but you also develop a gift to yourself. You can, you say to yourself when you're going through another dark moment, I made it through that. What if I stopped in that moment? I wouldn't have made it here. So there's no way I'm going to stop in this dark moment. I know that if I persist, if I endure, if I go through the suffering, I'm going to get to that, that higher place. So I, I just remember that time because it was very, very difficult. And a lot of people that I thought would be there for me weren't, they weren't at all. And, you know, there's times in my life now that you know, I, I talk about this, but it's, you feel really betrayed. I know what that feels like on a deep level when you're just so alone and you feel betrayed by a lot of people that should be there for you, but they're not. And you just, you can't give up. You can't get this disheart, dis, any feel of disheartment. You know, you just have to really suffer through it and say, it's okay. You know, and, uh, you're giving yourself a win in that moment that you can call on later on in life to serve you. Yeah, the, I think the old cliche is uh, quitters never win, winners never quit. And that's a, a simple way of saying what we're talking about here is that passion will lead to success. If, for, if you've got an idea as an entrepreneur and you try it and it doesn't work and you give up and go back to the employee world, okay, well, you're, you're never going to be successful in the way that you intended because you quit. You got to endure. You got to push through. And yes, you're right. That passion word is a lot about suffering too, suffering and endurance. Well, let's talk about the second key. I, I found that not only is it passion that helps unlock success for so many people like you and like me, it is also being at the right place at the right time. And it sounds to me like for you, uh, you know, I, I could guess here, but when you moved to the U S and you intended to go in to, uh, the, the, you know, the medical field, but it just, that timing didn't work. So is there, is there a place and time for you that you can point to and say, yeah, Jason, if I hadn't, if I hadn't been there or it hadn't been that timing, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. A hundred percent. Right. Like sequence matters, you know, how, how things fall into your life and when they fall into your life, we all know that you know, the right thing at the right time, you experience a reward, the right thing at the wrong time, you will experience pain, right? So I think it's really important for people to understand that, you know, and the, it mirrors with endurance too, because when you, when you, if I didn't come into this opportunity in a dark period in my life and someone presented it to me at a different moment, I wouldn't have grabbed onto it right? I wouldn't have held on to it as precious as I did. I would have taken it for granted. So I think when we're talking about timing, it's so incredibly important for people to, to put yourself in the right frame of mind. And I, I do my best to teach this to the team also, like always have a beginning day one mentality, because that's where you get the most out of everything. And what happens with time for a lot of people, we get complacent, we get jaded, we lose appreciation for things. But if you have like a day one mentality and you're always in this mindset of like, everything is working for me, everything is for my benefit. You know, you have that hunger. Like when you start something, nothing matters, right? The beginning of a relationship, they can do no wrong, right? If you, if you lose that, then everything starts to irritate you. So timing is a big thing that not a lot of people talk about a lot. And at the end of the day, we can control how we view that timing. Like you can, I can be in my career for 17 years and still outdo people that are starting. If I still have that mentality and then I have my experience plus my hunger. I mean, how can you beat me? 
I love the confidence. Well, let's talk about the third key. The third key to success is knowing the right people. And you mentioned, you mentioned in your story, when we were talking about your story, that you had an uncle who was the only person I think you said who was a, who's an entrepreneur in your life. Was he influential at all? And you, you attempting the entrepreneurship or maybe not, were, were there, was there someone else in your life that had you not met that person or that person had influenced you, you wouldn't be successful today? So he, he for sure was, and you, we were talking about cars, right? And a lot of people in today's society, it's kind of like, it's such an offensive spirit that everyone has. And I, I feel like very, it's not right. Like get rid of that spirit. You know, when people see my, people see people with a lot of money and nice things, it's like almost a jealousy that people have. Mm-hmm. So this uncle, he, uh, he did real estate in New York and he always had the nicest cars. He had the car before anyone else could get that car or buy it or have access to it. And I would always look at him like, my goodness. I, and I remember, uh, he got, this was in 2006. He got this brand new Bentley. It wasn't out, you know, and he, he was one of the first people to have it in, in the U S and I remember asking him and him saying, I asked him, can I, can I drive your Bentley? And he said, no, you can't afford to pay it if you damage it. And I was like, oh my gosh. And, and the reason why I share this with everyone is because that inspired me in that moment. Someone else might've said like, how dare you talk to me like that? You're not better than me, but he was better than me in that moment. And he, he was inspiring to me and that made me something, it gave me something to work towards. And so he was an entrepreneur and I associated an entrepreneur, very successful, the nicest cars, access to things before anyone else could get them. And I wanted that. And there's nothing wrong with wanting nice things. If you're a good person, you know, we all know this money will just make you more of who you already are. Yeah. You know, so if you're a bad person, it's just going to make you do more bad things. You know, if you're a selfish person, it's going to make you be more selfish. But, you know, he inspired me. And I feel like I'll never forget whenever I would see him. I always thought like, my goodness, I want that for my life. OK, so you've got you got pa- passion, right place, right time, right people in your life. What about the fourth key is preparation? What prepared you? What gave you the know-how to be so successful with uh, with your agency and to be such a successful entrepreneur? Yeah, so I think it was a lot of um, testing things out. I like innovation, but innovation is a very scary thing because you're not going to win all the time. But when when we're thinking about preparation, I would go back to the roots. Like I love that your podcast is called the roots of success, because I believe that a lot of people's problems are in their roots. It's not in their fruits. It's not in their Like what is appearing? If you go back to someone and what they're really dealing with, why they have like these insecurities, go back to a person's childhood. You'll find a lot. You'll discover a lot. And I really just believe my childhood prepared me with enormous work ethic. If you put me alongside someone else, I will like people talk about like, it's a funny thing, but I know what it feels like to pay my way through university, work a full-time job, go to school full-time, not having anyone to fall back on for money. So this is why when I came to the States and I didn't have anyone to fall back on, I know what it feels like to just work, 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 like outwork every single person. And so that, that has never left me. And that happened to me because I was prepared with a working spirit Um, growing up, I saw both of my parents work so hard to get ahead. And if I, if I, I believe that leadership is visual, right? So this is why what we see in our environment, it does plant inside of us. And then it's the meaning that we attach to it. So I always associated work with a good thing. You know, people today, they associate work with, it's like, Oh, I don't want to do this. It's not my calling. Well, let me tell you something, man. It won't be your calling because you're not successful at it. You're not successful at it because you don't work enough. You're not good at what you do. Breach, sister. (laughs) Well, let's talk about the fifth, the fifth key. The fifth key is plan. And, And it's not just business plan. That's what most people think. But what it is, is 
I found in most successful entrepreneur stories that they had a plan to deploy resources so that they could be successful. So for you, you were successful as an independent agent and running offices, but then you open up your own agency within, within that network, right? So when you did that, what was your plan? How did you, how did you get the resources needed to open the office, to, to hire the people, to get the marketing going? I mean, we, you and I use the same marketing company. That's how we ended up meeting. So, you know, we both know they're not inexpensive and, you know, there's a lot of money that goes into that. So how, how did you get the resources? What was your plan to, to become successful with your own agency? Yeah. So this is where I would really call on leadership and the importance of having good leadership in your life, because, you know, a lot of our plans are based on a model of, you know, something, it could be either our past. And so this is when people don't have a good life because they model a bad behavior or a bad upbringing or something. And what really allowed me to do well is that I had good leaders in the business, right? So I had a great mentor who took me from New Jersey to Maryland and he trained me like how to start up, how to do things and how to think differently. So when I went out on my own, I still had that basic blueprint and plan and map to follow. And then I was able to like build off of that foundation. And so this is why you can never, never underestimate the power of great leadership. And when you have a great leader or a great mentor in your life, you should take care of them, right? You should this is, I believe that you feed the things that feed back to you. I'm forever and eternally grateful for the leaders that I had in the business because they gave me a basic plan and I was able to build on it. And for a lot of people in their life, they don't have this strong foundation, which is like a map. You know, the map isn't everything, but it's like a, it's a foundation for you to build off of. And this is why a lot of people, they can't find their way out of bad situations or bad times because their map isn't there, their plan isn't there. And so having a great leader and what leadership is, is a person's ability to see further, right? And they help you to see further for yourself. And so just working with uh, great leaders and mentors really helped. And I, I think a lot of people are lost today because they don't have great leaders in their life. And a great leader makes you become a great leader, right? They push that inside of you and then you develop strong leaders as a result. So I think when I think of plan, leadership comes to mind. So on listening to this show, uh, we've got entrepreneurs that span uh, that every different size and type of business. So you've got the guys on the front end who are just getting started or haven't even started. And you got people on the other end that are super successful, like you built great businesses, multi-millions of dollars, and then everybody in between. So I want you, as we finish up our conversation, I want you to speak to somebody on the front end of that spectrum. What advice would you, as a very successful entrepreneur and a female entrepreneur and somebody who came to the States trying to do something different and ended up as an entrepreneur here, what, what would you say as advice to that person on that end of the spectrum to, about their, their life as an entrepreneur or potential? Yeah, I, I heard this saying uh, a while ago, and it's something that I always keep with me, and it's discipline your disappointments. And I think it's really powerful because whenever you're starting something new, you are going to be met with the most challenges. Like everything is new to you. You're putting yourself in an arena where you will feel overwhelmed. And so what it means to discipline your disappointments is that you don't take things personally, you ride through them. And then in those beginning phases, what you, what you have to do is you have to have enormous amounts of faith and trust, right? You have to trust a process. You have to trust your leadership. And so I would just encourage people to get around like-minded people, like don't be trying to grow your business. And then, you know, you're working so hard for, you know, eight, 10 longer hours a day. And then you go and you're talking to people that, have a nine to five mentality because what it will do is it won't set you up well, right? After you poured in all of that work, now you're talking to people that are like, why are you working so hard? Uh, are you sure this is the right thing for you to be doing? Like, I never see you anymore. And that will like derail you. So just discipline your disappointments, be able to take feedback, good, bad, let everything serve you. And then uh, what will happen is you'll slowly, but steady, you will uh, inch your way ahead. That's really good. Discipline your disappointments. I've never heard that before. That's that's 
That's clever. Well, uh, I know that there are going to be people listening to this show that say, okay, that lady's impressive. I want to reach out. I want to connect with her on socials or I want to reach out to her to do business. How would, how would you recommend people reach out if they wanted to get in touch with you? Yeah, I think Instagram is like the new business card, right? So I am Sabrina Lloyd. Um, I'm on Facebook too. I do a standalone podcast where I just teach people how to go from ordinary to extraordinary by just being a leader of your life. It has nothing to do with being alone, but it has everything to do with taking what happens to you and then you creating the life that, that you want to live. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that, you know, uh, I think there's a big calling for leadership and I, I appreciate that you do this podcast and I appreciate that you're successful at what you do because I believe that the world needs to celebrate success a whole lot more and that we need to have strong leaders that have the courage to stand up and say what's right. Otherwise, like the noise of the world will just rise up and it's not so pretty what they have to say all the time. (laughs) So folks, if you want to get in touch with Sabrina, it's Sabrina Lloyd. That's two L's. Sabrina Lloyd on Facebook or Instagram. I she does am have, Sabrina Lloyd. Yes. I am Sabrina Lloyd on Instagram. Yeah, she does have a really good feed. I follow her and, and uh, she's got some good stuff on there and she's got some good wisdom to share. So I am Sabrina Lloyd. Go follow her on Instagram. Look her up. And uh, our, as Lloyd agencies, is that something that anybody who's in need of insurance could reach out to you? What, uh, what would you want to say a pitch on that? Yeah, for sure. So LloydAgencies.com, you can reach out to us that way. Um, You know, we are always looking for people that have good work ethic and have a great attitude and that want to be coached to do and push themselves to be better. So we have a very intense working environment. We make no apology for it. It is not a place where you're going to go play around and make millions of dollars. You know, we work really hard and we have, we work on our minds. We work on everything and uh, you, you will leave our office. You will retire like a transformed individual. I love that. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's an honor to talk to you. Congratulations on all your success. I mean, you built this thing pretty significantly and congratulations on being able to do that and impacting so many people's lives. Thank you for being on the show today, Sabrina. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Another amazingly successful entrepreneur and another female entrepreneur. I love, I love interviewing very successful, powerful female entrepreneurs on the show, but as you heard through her story, you know, her tenacity, hard work, ethic, pushing forward. That's how you end up with a Lamborghini and four Ferraris and six Porsches amongst other cars. And again, that may not be your thing, but what do you want to accomplish? And it's not going to be accomplished through laziness. And she illustrates, Sabrina illustrates that if you work hard, you work smart, you surround yourself with the right people, you can be successful. And we went through those five keys. You can see how she took those keys and and started preaching on them. She knows what it's about. And I, I appreciate that about her to share her perspective. So thank you to Sabrina again for being on the show. Now, one of the things I want to do before we sign off today is invite you to become a member of the Successful Entrepreneur Family. The Successful Entrepreneur Online Learning Community is only $55 a month to join, and you get access to me and other guests and entrepreneur masters that I bring in to coach you on a monthly, uh, weekly basis every single month. So, for example, I do two open coaching calls every single month. Uh, It's open questions and answers called Ask Jason Live. You get that. Plus, you get a success lecture I do live once a month on some topic related to leadership or entrepreneurship or sales or financial literacy. And then I'll do a couple of entrepreneur masters series every month. But those are 90 minute episodes where I bring in an outside guest and we do a deep dive into their specialty, what they are good at, what they know how to do. So, for instance, I've done ones on how to create mailbox money through an online business. I've talked about how to uh, increase your sales without without. Uh, without uh, spending any overhead money, increasing sales without spending an extra overhead. That's pretty good. We talked about how to get a million dollars in unsecured line of credit for your business, all on the Entrepreneur Master Series, which you would get access to two of those, two open coaching calls every month, plus a success lecture every single month and access to live events that I do around the country for 55 bucks a month. I mean, come on, people. What, what, what are you wasting $55 on that you could be investing in yourself? It's one of the greatest dollar for dollar coaching decisions 
that you'll ever make. So go to the realjasonduncan.com slash TSE, as in that stands for the successful entrepreneur. So the realjasonduncan.com slash TSE, sign up today, get it done. Let's get you in there and I will see you on the next se uh, session that I do for the TSE members. All right, tune in again next week when I study and talk with yet another amazingly successful entrepreneur about his or her journey to success. Until then, I'm the real Jason Duncan and Jesus is King. Thank you for listening to another edition of The Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, we invite you to visit therootofallsuccess.com to access the show notes and other helpful resources. Take charge of your business. Grow it from great to incredible. Join us again next time here on The Root of All Success. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.